Hey, what is up everyone, it's David here. Throughout this year's Q&A, there's been tons of questions on how do you stop FOMOing, what is happening in the market, not to mention plenty of scary posts coming from legendary investors like Michael Burry, Jeremy Grantham, that basically freaked everyone out. And then the search for a stock market crash literally went through the roof earlier this year. So in this video, I wanna talk about my investing journey from beginner to picking my own stocks and how I thought about building a bulletproof portfolio so that I can sleep better at night. And of course, towards the end of this video, I will also do a portfolio update. As usual, it would mean the world to me if you could gently smash the like button somewhere around here. And if you really like what I'm doing, consider supporting the channel via Patreon and try out my Discord server. No, this video is not financial advice or recommendation to do anything. So without further ado, let's go. When it comes to building a bulletproof portfolio, this is gonna sound pretty childish, but I thought of it like building a Pokemon team. First, you have to start a Pokemon that you're gonna carry with you for a very long time. So I went with Charmander in Gen 1, Sign the Quill in Gen 2, and also Mud Keep in Gen 3. Let me know which one you went with in the comment section below. And then the second category of Pokemon are the ones that as you progress in the game, you're gonna find some legendary Pokemons that delivers exceptional performances. So these are Lugia, Articuno, or even Sukin. And the last category are Pokemons that are useful during certain parts of the game. Like for example, Pidgeotto early in the game, they're useful, they're really not that strong later in the game, but it allows you to fly. Okay, so let me translate all of that into the investing world. The starter Pokemon you're gonna carry with you long-term are the equivalent of vanilla, Vanguard, or Blackrock ETFs. You could even put FANG stocks in that category. This part of my portfolio is the foundation. It doesn't produce 10x returns, but it is consistent and it cushions the blow if the market were to tank. And depending on the ETF, diversification is built within. Like for example, this is VAS, and of course I'm not sponsored, but this ETF tracks the top 300 companies in Australia. 30% of it is in financials, 20% of it is in materials companies, and around 10% is in healthcare companies. And since inception, this ETF has generated approximately 9.59% return per year. Another vanilla ETF example would be VTS, and this tracks the entire US market. And you can see that it's very, very different compared to our market. It has 25% in technology companies, 15, 16% in consumer discretionary, and since inception, it has generated approximately 16% returns per year. So when I first started investing, I wasn't ready to pick my own stocks. So the foundation of my portfolio is really built on vanilla ETFs. Even as of recording this video, more than 40% of my portfolio is actually in, still in these ETFs. And the most beautiful thing of dollar cost averaging into these ETFs is that it really cushions the blow for me, especially when the market turns against you. If you wanna learn more about these vanilla low cost ETFs, check out this video right here, or I'll leave a link in the description box below because I've dedicated a full video on those. So this is the thing, as you get more comfortable with the markets, you are going to encounter your first legendary Pokemon sometime in the future. And I encounter mine in the midst of the pandemic crash. It wasn't a top tier legendary Pokemon like Lugia, but it was more like the legendary beast. And that company for me was AMD. I didn't have a structured due diligence process back then, but there was a few things that made this opportunity very obvious. First, since Dr. Lisa Su took over, a lot of things changed with AMD. They've just gotten so much better. And the opportunity became really obvious when Linus Tech Tips, as a matter of fact, all of the hardware YouTube tech channels just couldn't find anything positive to say about Intel CPUs. So even though I no longer have that company in my portfolio, that was a gem that delivered exceptional performance for me. But it wasn't long until I discovered my first top tier legendary Pokemon like Lugia, and that was Tesla for me. At the time, people were screaming that competition were coming for years, not to mention the number of short sellers really went off the charts. And investors did not want to believe that Tesla had a battery chemistry advantage, battery management system advantage compared to all of the other legacy automakers. And let's not get into autonomous driving. For this part of my portfolio, I personally like to start with 1% research positions and then slowly build it up over time as I get more confident in the business. Personally speaking, I'm not at a point in my investing journey where I feel comfortable having more than 10% of my portfolio in a high conviction position like Tesla. But that's probably because I'm still in the early stages of my investing journey. 
Then lastly, after I get really comfortable with my due diligence process and I understand the macro environment, I started picking my own stocks in my portfolio. And this is the equivalent to the last category of Pokemons that are useful in different parts of the game, but they are interchangeable, if you will. If you wanna learn more about my due diligence process now, I've documented the entire process in my how to research a stock video before investing. So feel free to check out that video as well after this one. Depending on where you're at with your investing journey, your percentage allocation to different parts of the team will be very different to mine. And for me personally, it was 100% vanilla ETFs in the beginning. I didn't really have anything else. And then as I got more comfortable, that percentage started to change as I start to allocate capital to specific companies that I really like. But what makes my Pokemon team or my diversified portfolio bulletproof is that, well, firstly, my ETFs are diversified across both location and also industries. And also secondly, I understand everything that I have in my portfolio very intimately. So based on your own investing journey, you have to decide the percentage allocation you're gonna give each part of your portfolio. Now, if you wanna share it in the comment section below, maybe the community can actually give you a bit of feedback as well. Before I do a portfolio update so that you can see how I've built my portfolio, I wanna quickly answer the question, how do I stop FOMOing? I found that at least with myself, it was very hard to stop FOMOing if I don't know what FOMOing feels like because once I understood what it feels like and all of the little things that I do before I FOMO, it allowed me to build things to prevent myself from FOMOing in the future. For example, when I first started investing, the companies that I FOMO into are generally the companies that I couldn't tell you in one sentence what the company actually does. So that wasn't hard to solve. Unless I could describe it to you in a single sentence what the company does and the growth rate, I didn't allow myself to touch those companies. Then after that, I realized that the companies I FOMO into, I couldn't describe why they suck. That's because I only went after the positive news or commentary, and that's the epitome of confirmation bias. That wasn't hard to solve either. I didn't allow myself to touch anything until I can describe both the positive and the negative. At the end of the day, there is no recipe on how to stop FOMOing, because what triggers you to FOMO is very different to what triggers me to FOMO. And if you can understand the little things that lead you to FOMO, you can actually build a really good system to prevent yourself from FOMOing in the future. With my CMC market side of my portfolio, it's worth 100,000 Australian dollars. And let me put everything in Pokemon terms and I will move my portrait just so you can see better. Now, this side of my portfolio is essentially the vanilla classic ETFs that I'm gonna keep for a long while. These are essentially my starter Pokemons, right? And then the growth side of my portfolio are the third category of Pokemons that could potentially be legendary. Like for example, Tauga could potentially be a legendary Pokemon in the future. I don't know yet, but we'll see how things go. But the rest are very interchangeable. With my stake portfolio, it's worth around 44,000 US dollars, which is give or take approximately 58,000 Australian dollars. Now on this side of my portfolio, the legendary Pokemons that I believe well, Tesla is a clear legendary Pokemon at this point. At the same time, I do believe that Twilio and also Shopify are going to be future legendary Pokemons. The rest are interchangeable. Just to give you a higher level overview of my portfolio construction, you can see that with growth stocks, it's currently sitting at 28%. With my value stocks is around 66%, more than 40 or 50% of this is basically in classic vanilla ETFs. I have 2.5% in cash. And to be perfectly honest, I'm trying to stay as invested as I, pers as I possibly can. And I have around three to 5% in crypto, depending on the day. So this portfolio construction works for me and it helps me sleep at night. As usual, I'm not sponsored by Stake, but if you do want to try Stake for yourself, I left the link in the description box below. Thank you so much for hanging out with me all the way to the end. If you did learn something new, consider gently smacking the like button right there. Subscribe to my channel, click onto the bell so that when I release future videos, I can let you know. If you're still bored, I left a video on the screen that I think it's incredible to watch next. And as usual, Otto will always do the honors and I'm gonna see you very, very soon 